Okay, let's look at a more, maybe a more subtle um, statement that, that we might want to prove or disprove. Uh, so I picked this from the book. It's problem seven on page 179. And the assignment or the problem is to prove or disprove this statement. So uh, if you look at it, if the proposition is suppose that A, B, and C are sets, if A cross C equals B cross C, then A equals B. And this is actually kind of believable. And, and let me outline how you might go about trying to prove it. So um, first, let's work out what the sets are that we're working with. So A cross C is the set of pairs A, C, right? Where A is in A and C is in C. And B cross C is the collection uh, B, C, where B is in B and C is in C. And our, we know that these are equal. And we want to show A equals B. And as you'll recall from our discussion of sets, that means we want to first show that A is a subset of B. And for this, choose A and A. And pick C and C so that um, A, C, therefore, belongs to A cross C. But A cross C equals B cross C. So A, C must also belong to B cross C. And the only way that can be the case uh, is if A belongs to B. And on the other hand, um, let's take choose B and B. And now pick C and C so that BC is in B cross C. And since B cross C equals A cross C, we know that BC is in A cross C, and therefore B must be in A. So we've shown that this part, the second thing here, is that B is a subset of A. So therefore A equals B. Terrific, right? Well, there's a catch. Um, and this is a kind of a nice illustration of, uh, of how you can get yourself into trouble. And the catch is here. Because the hypotheses allow A, B, and C to be any sets. What if C is the empty set? If we choose C to be the empty set, then A cross C is equal to B cross C. They're both equal to the empty set. Because when you try to make these sets of ordered pairs, where you choose A and A and C and C, there is no C and C. So you can't make a pair. So if C is the empty set, no matter what sets you choose for A and B, A cross C is equal to B cross C. So we could choose C to be the empty set, we could choose A to be the set containing one and B to be the set of equaling the real numbers. And it would be the case that one cross the empty set is equal to R cross the empty set because they're both equal to the empty set. But one is not equal to R. And so we found a counterexample to this theorem. And the counterexample comes by when we choose C equal to the empty set. If you put an additional hypothesis, if you add to the proposition the hypothesis that C is not empty, then our proof works. Because then there is an element C in C, and you can do this exact argument. What this particular example shows is that oftentimes counterexamples come from what you might think of as edge cases. Like, 
a, z a variable being zero when you didn't think of it being zero, or a set being empty if you didn't think of it being empty, or an integer being negative if you didn't think of it being negative. And um, so you have to watch out for those edge cases. Um, whenever you see something which is true, like here, it's a good practice when you see a proposition which says something is true for all sets to ask yourself, what about the empty set? Because if it's going to go wrong, there's an excellent chance it's going to go wrong for the empty set.